understand that can be tricky. Let's um if I could just have a hands up on who has children in P to three. Right? And who has children in four to six? Wonderful. Because what happens in P to three flows on significantly into four to six, but it is quite a different uh, structure uh, in, in that those major year levels. The, the reason why we're doing Coffee Connections this term really is to equip our parents because things have changed a lot since we were at school, <coughs> though some of us have never left. And uh, in order, language is different, terminology is different, the way of doing things is different. And so this is our goal this term is to try and demystify some of the things that happen because it's not always easy to come and ask your classroom teacher, you know, what do you mean by this and I'm concerned by that. So hopefully this focus on reading today will assist you somewhat. Please don't hesitate to ask questions and please ask them at any time. Annette and I can't promise not to go to 100 mile an hour because we feel very passionately about what we do at school. And so of course we're in a great tearing hurry to tell you everything that we know, which is a significant amount at this point in our lives. Uh, so please interrupt. Please say, what do you mean? Uh, how can I help my child? What if my child is doing this, that and the other? Uh, between us we have quite a, a number of years of experience and we have children who range the spectrum of uh, slow learners to uh, learn, requiring learning extension. Her children were on the learning extension end. I'll leave you to work out where my children were. One of whom was rather lazy, but he's learning some good lessons uh, now at 20. So please don't hesitate to make this as interactive and as useful for you as, as possible. So really it is about, it is a long journey because uh, God decided that walking and crawling, all of those things will occur naturally. They do all eventually get their teeth, don't they? They do eventually uh, are potty trained, you know, it might take some longer, a longer time than others. But things like learning how to read are not, it's not a natural process, it's actually quite a complicated process. And just to make life interesting, it's different for every single child. If you're blessed to have two, three or four children, you might notice that already. That what worked with one child doesn't necessarily work with another. I had one who was uh, quite detailed, would sound out every single letter of every single word. That made reading very pleasant. I had the other who would just look at the first letter and just guess. Oh, you know, big, bad, whatever, whatever. Close enough is good enough. That also made reading very pleasant at home. So we understand what life is like for you and hopefully this will assist you somewhat. But the most, this is all about the foundations of reading in Peter 3. And it really is a partnership between what happens at home and what happens at school. You've actually done a lot of the hard work, whether you realise it or not. All that time you spent reading books when they were little, all those nursery rhymes you sang, uh, every time they pointed at McDonald's and you went, yes, big M, McDonald's. <laughs> you were involved in pre-reading. You may not have realised it. Every time you looked at environmental print, it just means that they could read all the names of the, of the shops before they could actually read. All of that was very important foundational information that you were building for them. So it is about a partnership. And it is what happens in the classroom, what happens at home, what happens in our reading room with our reading aids. We're so blessed to have these ladies who are so incredibly patient. Fancy hearing the same book read 140 times, I mean, really. And they, they really enjoy it, because for each one is an individual, and each child, they can see the progress. So the two biggest issues for us where, re where reading is concerned is about deciphering. What do this, this group of letters actually mean? And then about comprehension. What do these groups of letters together, what does that mean in terms of a picture or a concept or a feeling or a word? Sometimes they can do one and not the other. We've had children who can decode brilliantly and you're listening to this fluent reader thinking, this is great. When you actually ask them a question about what they read, it's total incomprehension. That's not reading. Some of them can struggle their way uh, through reading and be very lacking in fluency, lacking in expression, with lots of substitutions. But when you ask them questions about what they're reading, they have actually understood the majority of it. it that's not uh, effective reading, if I can put it like that. So we really need both to work together. 
the classroom teacher really is uh, responsible for teaching our children how to read. Our reading aids are the support. It's the revision is actually the, the, the absolute key issue for us. There is such a developmental component to this because they all take a different amount of time to get a grip on what it is to read. It is about having a strong background in rhyming. If you've got little kids still at home, uh, if they have not come to school yet, that rhyming is an essential component of knowing how to read. Recognition of sound. If they've got, um, if they need grommets, if they have blue ear, if they have anything that's uh, interfering with their hearing, get it checked and get it fixed because it's they're not hearing what's actually happening. You might think, you know, all of those things, you know, they're not that important. They're hugely important. Their speech is also vital because they write how they speak. Uh, and you would think, well, we can get that fixed later on. They actually, I think, they actually give them until year three to get the TH sound down correctly. That's a little late in my book. Going against, I hope there's no speech therapist in the room. Uh, because if they're saying with WIF or WIV, they will write WIF and WIV because that is what they are actually hearing in their heads. Uh, being able to hear the difference between the M sound and the N sound. And there's a lot of this that goes on in Prep 1 and 2 where the teachers are enunciating very clearly and making quite exaggerated shapes with their mouth so that their children will see that M says mmm, lips are together, and N says mmm, all the teeth are exposed. And sometimes it's that visual cue that tells that the children, oh, okay, I have to say this differently, and that's why I hear it differently. But sometimes they can say it, but not actually be able to hear the difference between the M and the, the mmm and the mmm. You can see it now, can't you? Uh, if, do, please don't be too concerned about the whole uh, level situation. With the levels of 1 to 15, they actually encompass a very short space of chronological time. It's actually only six months of reading age. And we expect our children to move through those levels 1 to 15. Some will take six months, some will take nine months, some will take 12, and some will take 18. All of that is very acceptable because it's a developmental process. We've had children who've left uh, prep and left year one and we thought, oh, you know, they're on the lower end. But by the time they have finished year two, they have skyrocketed. By the time they have finished year three, all of them are starting to, the, the gap has started to close uh, so long as there are no other issues involved. If there is not a processing situation or a hearing situation uh, or a visual situation, the gap does actually start to close. So if, your child, if you're thinking my child is not making sufficient progress, or what they need is time and continued uh, reminders about what those letters and sounds are doing. I'm going to lose my place because I made such clear notes here. Reading follows a process. It is start, does start with letters and sounds and names and shapes. And that information coalescing in prep is absolutely essential. But they could, with great uh, in, a, in an automatic sense, look at that letter and be able to tell you that's a B, this is how you write a B, B says B, B can be found in, in bad and in Bob and in Bill. All of those early things that happen in prep are completely essential for later on. And that's why it's not something that can be hurried. If your little boys were like my little boy who actually didn't realise there was anything to do with letters and sounds until September of his preschool year, he was a little bit disadvantage when he came to year one and he was actually expected to, to use this to write with and not to dig holes in a sand with. Boys are like that. It is actually a, a full sensory process where they are seeing, they are hearing, they are speaking, they are writing. All of that works together to cement in their minds what these letters and sounds are actually doing and, and prep is fabulous for doing that. There, there was actually a CD with the sound do you, do you, is that still available? I'm asking I'm, you. I'm, I'm fine. I don't know if it's still available. In the uniform in the shop, I might just check that. Because that, any time you put a song to something, I was going to make you sing, actually, but if I could have found the CD, but lucky I couldn't. 
Uh, anything that has a song to it immediately assists our memories uh, to remember all of those things. Uh, I wasn't even on the prep page, how's that? So the first step is knowing their letters, their sounds, uh, and the names of the letters. Why are the names important? Because that's the precursor to spelling. You can't actually spell if you don't know the names of the letters. The next part of that is blending, putting two and three letters together. And we, they know that A says A and T says T, and we put them together. And sometimes this can be so difficult to be able to go A. And this is what the teachers and the reading aids, and no doubt you are doing at home, constantly going, at, at, what does that say? And they'll go, at, and eventually get, get it to at, and you go, yes, that's it. And when you see the lights turn on, uh, when a child has learned how to read, there is nothing like it. And it is an incredible experience. If they can do at, then you just add, we add a first sound to the beginning. M at makes mat, b at makes bat, and so on. And then you combine that with a visual picture of what, the, of what that actually means. That's when reading is starting to occur, when they can differentiate and they can match the word bat to the picture bat and not be confused by mat or cat. That's the beginning of reading actually happening. It does need to be fast and accurate recall because it needs to be so automatic. The slower they are at, at remembering visually and remembering uh, in an oral sense, the slower they will be with reading because too much is happening all at the same time. When we drive nowadays, we drive an automatic. But if we think, you can tell that's also on my agenda. My 18 year old is learning how to drive. It's not automatic. You have to remind her to stay in the lane still after all this time. But I have changed cars, that hasn't helped. You have to remind her to stay in the lane. You have to remind her to look to the right. It's not automatic. And so redoing it with her now, I'm seeing all my bad habits as a driver. And similarly for our children learning to read, it does need, it will become automatic at some point. Blending is the other, um, the big issue, blending and leading into word building, which was that map, bat, cat, sat, side of thing. I can't emphasise enough the importance of not doing this too quickly. Because if it's not cemented, they've got a faulty foundation. And when they then start to, get to look at words that are more complex, they haven't got a strong foundation to fall back on. So they are better off to stay revising and revising and, and feeling very confident with that before they move on to the next stage. So do not be in a hurry. Do not be uh, concerned if you think my child is only on level six or whatever it is. Everybody else seems to be, there's no such thing as everybody else, but everybody else seems to be up at level 12. Please don't be dismayed by that. Let your child have the time to do what needs to be done. It, a lot of the things that you continue to do um, will assist them. There's this whole arena called phonemic awareness, and a fancy term really just for continuing to train their ears and their eyes. So for example, if they can rhyme, you know, if I say, um, uh, let's try and pick a hard one. If I say bug, what would you say? Slug, hug, mug. You're having to think a little bit about that. They would have to think a lot about that. And that's the kind of game to play in the car when you're fresh and not frazzled at 3.30 because you've just left the car park because it's a really easy pickup. That's the kind of thing to be doing in the morning. Yes, you reading to them, absolutely essential. Hammering them to read the same book 15 times, not essential. Are they enjoying it? They want to read it 15 times? Great, go for it. But you making them sit down and read it 15 times? No, not great. Work, do some rhyming games. Do something that's fun. Another idea is to think about where is the sound? Is it in the beginning of the word, the middle of the word, or the end of the word? Uh, we're thinking about the sound D. D says D. And then where is D come in the word dog? Beginning. In the beginning. Where does D come in the word Bad. Where does the word, where does the sound d come in the word 